Welcome back to Tenfold Live Grade 12. I'm Helen and that means that this is Life Sciences. Thank you Liberty for bringing us together today and making sure that our Grade 12s are on the mark for their Life Sciences exam. And of course it's not only this program that will help you, it's using the Tenfold Education app and also our YouTube channel at Mindset Learn. Make sure that you are well equipped for that final exam. And what we're doing today is going through the mistakes made by the 2022 matrix to make sure that you don't make these mistakes yourself. So commonly confused terms, that is what we're looking at. And the next terms we're going to look at are homologous structure, and homologous chromosomes. And they've both got this word homologous as part of the term. So what do we mean by homologous? Homo means the same, okay? And logus refers to information or knowledge. So something that is homologous is going to have some of the same information in it. A homologous structure, this came from your section on evidence for evolution. And it showed that homologous structures exist in animals and plants for that matter who have a common ancestor. So if we look at the forelimb of the whale, we see a humerus an ulna, a radius, we see carpals, metacarpals and phalanges and we even see the same structure in a horse, a lion, a human and a bat and although these animals are using their forelimb for different purposes, swimming, running, running and grasping, tool usage, flying, Although the animals are using their forelimbs for different purposes, underlying there is the same information, the same bone structure, which points to a common ancestor. So now seeing the word homologous used in a different context in genetics, in your studies of meiosis, homologous chromosomes mean two chromosomes that are going to share similar knowledge or knowledge, information that is the same. So your homologs, one is received from the father, which is called the paternal homolog, and the maternal homolog comes from your mother. And they will have the identical information on them in terms of the genes. So, for example, this gene on the homologous chromosomes codes for the identical characteristic of blood groups. But we know that there are variations. For example, your father may have given you the chromosome that has the gene for blood group A, while your mother has given you the same gene, but it codes for blood group B. And we call these different versions of the gene alleles. All right, so blood group A, blood group B, blood group O, they will be representatives of different versions of the genes, but they contain the same information. The structure of your hair, maybe you got a curly haired allele from your father and a straight haired allele from your mother. So when you see homologous, remember we're referring to similar, the same underlying information. And if it's going to be in a structure, we're looking at evidence for evolution. If it's in a chromosome, we're looking at chromosomes inherited from your two parents. Still sticking with the idea of 
homologs or homologous chromosomes, and we have touched on that, the difference between a gene and an allele. And this is crucial, not only for your understanding of genetics, but also for your understanding of evolution. We know that two genes at the same site, and that means at the same locus on homologous chromosomes, they're called alleles. And the alleles may be the same, in which case we say they are homozygous. If they are different, they are heterozygous, and that helps us to determine what the offspring may look like or what characteristics they may have. This is also this idea of alleles and the fact that they show genetic variation of different characteristics is also important, not only in genetics, but for evolution. Because when we define what evolution is, it simply means that there's a change in the frequency of alleles in the gene pool of a population over time. So maybe at time one, we see that the alleles are very similar for whatever this gene codes for in a population. But over time, if the frequency of alleles changes and we start seeing this green allele instead of the blue allele, we're going to see that the frequency or the time, number of times we see an allele in the gene pool has changed and that is evolution. We can't say that genes change or the frequency of genes change because the genes are always there but we can see that the version of the genes can change. New alleles can be introduced by mutations and the alleles keep shuffling up because of crossing over, random arrangement of chromosomes on the metaphase equator, we see random fertilization, we see random mating. Lots of different ways to introduce variation of the alleles. The genes are coding for the same characteristic, but different versions of that characteristic. Don't get those two terms muddled up. All right, lots of uh, confusion when it comes to the three kinds of dominance that we can have in genetics. Remember that Mendel, when he was first putting together his theories and ideas about dominance, he proposed the law of dominance where he said that in the heterozygous state, one of the alleles will always be dominant over the other allele and the dominant allele will mask or suppress the expression of the recessive allele. And the only time we'll see the recessive phenotype is if both of the alleles are recessive. And that was Mendel's law and we associate that today with complete dominance. So what then do we mean by co-dominance and incomplete dominance? All right, co-dominance means that both alleles are equally dominant. So they are equally dominant, that means they are both expressed and we're going to see that evident in the phenotype by seeing patches, for example, of coloration. So we will have a roan horse or a roan cattle that we have patches of red hair and white hair. We might see dogs with black patches and white patches. This is where 
both the white allele and the black allele are equally dominant, co-dominance. The third kind of dominance is incomplete dominance. And here, neither allele is able to exert full dominance. And therefore, in the phenotype, we tend to see a blending together of the characteristics. So in not patches of red and white where both are expressed, but rather a blending of the red with the white, for example, to make pink, or a blending of black and white to make gray. All right? So those are your three forms of dominance. Don't misinterpret those. Now, remember that it's not only terms that the examiners picked up that there was confusion with. There's also processes that students seem to muddle up and confuse. And one of those processes that came up in last year's paper as being really problematic was transcription and translation. And of course, both of those are part processes in the large process called protein synthesis. This little diagram shows both of the uh, transcription and the translation in action. When we have the DNA, which is the double strand, and the DNA makes a little transcription bubble, and that gene is copied, and the copy is called messenger RNA. This process that happens inside the nucleus is called transcription. But the messenger RNA can move out of the nuclear pores and out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm. And it's here, here's our mRNA, it's here in the cytoplasm that the nucleic acid code is translated into an amino acid code or polypeptide code. Transcription means copying. Translation means changing. So if you copied something I said and I said, hello everybody, and you copied me, you would give me something that is identical. You would say, hello everybody. And so transcription means taking the original gene and copying it to mRNA. Translation is changing. So if I said, hello, everybody, and you said, Sunny Bonani, then we are translating from English to Isizulu. And that is changing the code. And what is happening here is we're getting a nucleic acid code being translated into a protein code. All right, how do you remember which is which? Here's where the copy happens. Here's where the translation happens. And if you still can't remember that, in alphabetical order, transcription, comes before translation because C comes before L in the alphabet. And if that's the way you have to remember it, grade 12s, that's the way you remember it and you make sure that you get the points. All right, I think before we continue, let's take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to look at a very important part of the exam paper that can come up in paper one or in paper two that students still get wrong after so many years. So come back after the break and we'll sort out this mysterious problem.